At the postseason test at Valencia, riders switching teams got their first taste of what's to come, while those staying got to test the prototypes for 2023. In this video, let's go over who brought what at the Valencia test and let's do it in the order of manufacturer standings. Starting with Ducati. Being more than a couple of steps ahead of the rest of the grid, Ducati could theoretically get away without bringing in many new parts for 2023, but still, Ducati seemed to be in better shape than some of their competitors. Learning from early woes of 2022 season which compromised a huge chunk of season for Jorge Martin, Johan Zarco and Luca Marini, factory Ducati team boss, Davide Tardazzi admitted that thanks to the hard work done by the Pramac riders and Luca Marini, the engine now has attained power delivery. For those who don't know the story or perhaps have forgotten it, Ducati brought a new 2022 spec engine for GP22s but right before the season opener weekend at Qatar. Peko Banyayat decided to ditch the latest spec engine because its power delivery was very unrefined. Other riders with full factory support, Martin, Zarco and Marini, were stuck with the 2022 engine and spent most of the season developing and refining the power delivery while Peko focused on winning the title. Back to the present, Tardazzi admitted that the now refined 2022 spec engine with few improvements is the new 2023 spec engine for the factory Ducati bikes. Along with the engine, all four factory-supported riders were spotted testing new chassis and two updated aero packages. One of the aero package is an evolution of the current one while the other one sports an Aprilia-like ground effect fairing. Next up, Yamaha. Another big story at the start of 2022 season was Fabio Quartararo signing with Yamaha until the end of 2024 on the promise of Yamaha working on bringing more horsepower to their engine in 2023. Yamaha even partnered with ex-Toyota and ex-Ferrari Luca Marmarini and his firm to help out in engine development as a clear intent to keep that promise. The improved engine was tested by Cal Crutchlow at Hurrath, Aragon and Motegi and he described it to be the solution to Yamaha's problems. Fabio Cordero himself tested the new improved engine at the Barcelona and Mizano test and admitted to feeling a clear difference on both occasions. However, at Valencia, both Franco Morbidelli and Fabio Cordero felt no difference at all between the new engine and the one they have been running all of 2022. Other than that disappointment, Fabio and Franco were seen testing a new chassis and two wildly different aero packages. While one of the aero packages was a slight evolution of the one they ran in 2022, the second one was very similar to that of KTM at the front end and Ducati at the rear, with M1 also growing a pair of dinosaur wings on the tail unit. The much larger front wings of the Yamaha seem to be designed with more horsepower in mind, but with the lack of extra grunt, that's only going to slow down the M1 with all that extra downforce. Next in line is Aprilia. Breaking out of the midfield, Aprilia had a great 2022 but at the same time, they also lost their concessions, and the big question for 2023 and beyond is, how will they fare with that? At the Valencia test, while throughout the day, Aprilia riders seemed to be busy testing a new swing arm, a new chassis, an updated engine and some electronic improvements, Alicia Spargaro felt the improvements weren't enough and called the Valencia test a missed opportunity for the Italian manufacturer. Elsewhere, another Aprilia rider had a good day, but more on that in another video. On to KTM. After losing concessions at the end of 2020, KTM's performance took a nose dive off the cliff in 2021. The Austrian brand took the whole of 2022 to switch their approach from bringing two truckloads of new parts at every other race weekend to calmly understanding the root of their problems. KTM's new RC16 for 2023 went through a complete change in weight distribution and a newly designed tail section to solve their tire consumption troubles. A new chassis to help the RC16 turn better was also spotted along with a new aero package. KTM team manager Francesco Guidotti revealed that the aero package will undergo changes over the winter with extensive testing in the wind tunnel with the help of engineering talent coming over from the Red Bull Racing Formula 1 team. And rounding up the bottom of the standings, Honda. Unsurprisingly, Honda brought the most amount of new parts to Valencia but given how early they packed up and Marc Marquez calling it a bike incapable of winning the title, none of the new parts had the desired effect. On show at Honda were a brand new engine, a completely redesigned tail and exhaust section, a new Ducati-like aero package and a new air intake. Honda brought all this to hopefully give Marquez some more stability at the front, which he did admit gaining a bit, but at the cost of lost rear grip. In summary, the new bike made improvements in some parts but then lost time in other parts and ended up having similar lap times as the outgoing model. Right now in MotoGP, on one hand we have brands like Ducati, KTM and Honda who have deep pockets and huge budgets for their MotoGP programs. 
And on the other hand, there are brands like Aprilia and already gone Suzuki with a fraction of budgets compared to the others, and Yamaha somewhere in between. Do you think it's time for MotoGP to have Formula 1 like cost caps to balance the race of development? Let's chat in the comments below. And before you leave, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing if you aren't already subscribed.